Hello, I am Katri Kalpi from Aalto University School of Business. In this video, I want to talk to you about our recent JSCM article titled If Only We'd Known, Theory of Supply Failure Under Two-Sided Information Asymmetry. This article is co-authored with uh, Alistair Brandon-Jones from the University of Bath in the UK, Eric van Rij from Erasmus University in the Netherlands, and Juri Martin Heikki from uh, Aalto University. This is a theoretical conceptual article where we drill into causes of supply failure and uh, how the buyer attributes those failures, so who the buyer blames. And specifically, as the title suggests, we are looking at two-sided information asymmetry, both as a cause to supply failures and as a cause to misattributing those failures. Um, in this article, we are drawing from uh, both agency theory and attribution theory. So, what is this paper about? Drawing from agency theory, we have a principal and agent. So, we have a buyer and a supplier. Agency theory assumes that uh, because there is an organizational boundary, the buyer, meaning the principal, suffers from information asymmetry and that the parties have misaligned goals. So in essence, the supplier, because of this information asymmetry, has the opportunity to act in their own best interest rather than in the buyer's interest. So the supplier can engage in hidden action. So for example, uh, not use full effort uh, in, in delivering what is contractually agreed or using substandard poor quality materials. So basically what agency theory says that if a supply failure occurs, the cause is hidden action by the supplier. But what if we consider not one-sided information asymmetry as agency theory usually does, but a two-sided information asymmetry? So it is not only the buyer, the principal that suffers from uh, you know, hidden information, but also the supplier suffers from information asymmetry. This brings an alternative explanation to supply failure causes and in general to uh, agency problems in buyer-supplier relationships. So if both parties are assumed to suffer from information asymmetry, uh, a new cause for supply failure arises, hidden expectations. So the buyer uh, may not have uh, fully and, and totally uh, explained their specifications, their desires, their wishes, the operating environment, uh, for the products that the supplier is delivering to the supplier. And the supplier, without no kind of opportunistic intent, uh, just hasn't fully understood what the buyer wants and or hasn't realized that the buyer has given incomplete uh, specifications, explanations and, and wishes and does not uh, realize to ask for more clarifications. So these sort of poor communications uh, can result in supply failures as well. Uh, importantly, we, we kind of uh, hold the assumption of bounded rationality from agency theory and, and we assume that this is sort of a relational problem. So both parties uh, are in in sense uh, a cause or the fault, the supply failure is derived from the relationship between the buyer and the supplier rather than hidden action of the supplier, as standard agency theory assumes. So one issue is exactly this. What causes failures in biosupplier relationships? Another issue is then, how does the cause of the failure get attributed? In, a, in other words, who gets the blame? And this brings us to attribution theory part of our theorizing. So attribution theory, and specifically we focus on causal attribution. This is a highly perceptual explanation of how things have unfolded, what has caused something to happen, not necessarily the truthful explanation of what has happened, say, behind a supply failure. And attribution theory says that, you know, people have a tendency to commit this sort of fundamental attribution errors, including so that they are more likely to blame another act actor, such as the supplier, rather than an external situation for failure, or uh, alternatively, that they would more likely blame another actor rather than the relationship for a failure. So what then? Does it matter if the buyer misattributes the cause of failure? For example, uh, blaming the supplier when in fact the cause was in uh, the buyer not sufficiently communicating about specifications with the supplier. Yes, it does matter because misattributions of failure can have severe consequences for the uh, future of the buyer-supplier relationship.
For the sake of simplicity, let's assume we have two alternative causes for supply failure, hidden action and hidden expectations. And the buyer can attribute the failure to either hidden action or hidden expectation. So in essence, we may have a match or a mismatch between what is the true cause of the failure and what gets the blame, what the failure is attributed to. So if we first look at this corner here, where hidden action has been the true cause and the buyer correctly attributes the uh, failure to hidden action. We call this scenario the rightfully wary buyer. So in this case, uh, you know, drawing from agency theory, the buyer will likely, um, you know, either exit the relationship or apply sanctions um, to towards the supplier. The mechanisms are a match to the underlying cause. So while, you know, hidden action has taken place from which the buyer has suffered, hopefully the correctly applied mechanisms will take care of, uh, you know, uh, future failures and the supplier will correct their actions. So in this case, we had a match between the failure cause and uh, how the failure is attributed to. If we look at this corner here, we have a scenario which we call the rightfully trusting buyer, where the failure has been caused by hidden expectations. So kind of, you know, buyer and supplier and how they've been communicating and acting with each other has been to blame. And the buyer correctly attributes the failure to such hidden expectations in the relationship. This should hopefully lead to training, increased communication, coordination between the buyer and the supplier, which would lead to the relationship improving and, you know, in future there being less or hopefully not no hidden expectations and improved performance. But what if the failure cause and how the failures attributed are not a match? This is where we start to see problems in buyer-supplier relationships. So uh, we have here first the naive buyer. So the failure has been caused by hidden action, but the supplier incorrectly attributes it to hidden expectations. So kind of the, the buyer thinks, it, you know, we weren't communicating enough and it isn't that the, the supplier is trying to cheat us in some way. This would probably mean that the uh, su uh, buyer suffers financially because they're not applying sanctions and penalties and the supplier can get away with hidden action. And then we come to the, the last uh, corner, uh, which is uh, kind of the focus of our article uh, in terms of mismatch, where the failure has been caused by hidden expectations, but the buyer attributes it to hidden action. So this scenario we call the unnecessary cynical buyer. In this case, probably the buyer again applies penalties, sanctions. You know, the supplier is blacklisted for, for you know, poor performance, etc. This likely puts a strain on the relationship when, um, you know, the supplier feels they have been mistreated. They haven't been, you know, acting opportunistically to try and take advantage of the buyer. And, and what is perhaps even worse, failures are likely to persist in the future because the true cause hidden expectations was not actually taken care of through correct and underlying mechanisms because the failure was misattributed. Building from the framework that you just saw, the rest of our article then focuses on causes of and remedies for misattribution. We develop uh, propositions on factors that can contribute to misattribution, such as the use of outcome-based contracts. We then also discuss factors uh, that can assist the buyer in cognitive elaboration so reaching the correct attribution. Such factors uh, center on the buyer having sufficient information on the supplier's uh, past behavior and performance. We continue by discussing likely context for hidden expectations, such as supply chains suffering from various types of distances or contracts for complex products and services. Uh, in the end of the article, we then develop an extensive research agenda uh, on how to study further hidden expectations and failure attributions. We draw this research agenda from both agency theory and attribution theory. Given the complexity of uh, modern supply chains and you know, the complexity of buyer-supplier relationships nowadays, failures can and do occur often. Hence, it is important how we treat such failures in buyer-supplier relationships to ensure good future performance in the relationship. If you're interested in reading uh, and more about the topic, you know, go and look up our full article. Thank you for listening.